Hello, everyone. Welcome back to A Cup of English. The title of today's podcast is Steamers West. This podcast is brought to you by my YouTube channel, also called A Cup of English, where you can find a variety of different videos that will help you with your language learning journey. So, welcome to Steamers West. I have discovered a local haunt that I have made my own. Steamers West. It's a cafe restaurant I can pop into between my interpreting jobs for a quick bite to eat. It's a simple place, actually, a converted mechanical garage. It has been renovated to be appropriate for serving food, but has maintained the two large mechanic shop doors and its very basic structure. It's only open until 3 pm every day and it swarms with customers until then. That's a good sign, I think. The simple, clean food and good quality coffee keep the humans coming back. There is a quaint outdoor seating area that overlooks Memorial Park, which is considered the centre of Wenatchee. You remember the park with the splendid trees? The doggy people of this town can bring their pets, enjoy the view, and socialise. After a quick break here, I can head back to work and get there within a few minutes. There is a second good reason I come here regularly. My daughter works here. We get to chat a little as she operates the espresso machine and occasionally she will give me a free cookie. Now that's a ritual I certainly approve of. My little routine here is on my list of what I call the simple pleasures in life. The founders of Starbucks had as one of their premises of their company the human need for a third place. By that I mean that apart from home and work, we need a third place where we can hang out and feel at home. Gordon Bowker, Jerry Baldwin and Zev Siegel were influenced by a Dutch entrepreneur who introduced them to the coffee culture, which we have had for centuries in Europe. He showed them high-quality roasting techniques and they married that with the place with atmosphere where people like to linger. I actually remember when Starbucks really became big in the early 90s. Since their tremendous growth then, the United States has adopted what I call a cafe expansion. There are cafes everywhere that are designed to be the third place in almost every community. They are an upgrade, I would say, to the well-known American diner, which was more of a restaurant. Now you can find swarms of online business owners filling these cafes working at their laptops whilst sipping coffee, as well as groups of friends and retirees who get together for a good chat. It's a real evolution of culture and a much nicer place to write podcasts than at my kitchen table. OK, some grammar points here. Number one, I chose a local haunt. Well, this is a wonderful noun. I would say that it's slightly comical. And it's an expression about a place that a person likes to go to. Obviously, only a ghost haunts a place. But I think it's probably because a ghost is imagined to frequent a place that we use the noun haunt. It means that the place is visited all the time. A. 
The Fox and Crown pub has been our haunt for over 30 years. The Fox and Crown pub has been our haunt for over 30 years. B. That abandoned house became a haunt for groups of teenagers up to no good. That abandoned house became a haunt for groups of teenagers up to no good. Number two. To make your or my own. Well, it means to take possession of either literally or figuratively. So in the podcast, I say that I've uh, made Steamers West my own. Well, obviously, I don't own it. It just means that I have emotionally sort of adopted it. I like it and I frequent it. A. With a bit of creativity, the lady took the second-hand cabinet and made it her own by painting a beautiful fresco on it. With a bit of creativity, the lady took the second-hand cabinet and made it her own by painting a beautiful fresco on it. B. We recently discovered a small, secluded park in the neighbourhood and we have made it our own. We recently discovered a small, secluded park in the neighbourhood and we have made it our own. Number three. To marry something with something else. Well, it's the same in meaning as to connect or join something very suitably or very well. The two things go well together. A. The chef married the roast beef with a slightly spicy red wine sauce. The chef married the roast beef with a slightly spicy red wine sauce. B. The teacher successfully marries important content with exciting delivery. The teacher successfully marries important content with exciting delivery. Well, that's the end of today's podcast on this rainy November day. I hope you are all well and I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, If you have any comments or questions, please email me at acupofenglish at hotmail.com. You can also join my Facebook page called Anna from A Cup of English. Until next time, take care. Bye bye.